Okay, this uh, video is a uh, tutorial for an overlay for a shot cut. And the first thing that I'm going to do is uh, show you shot cut and also give you instructions on uh, step by step so that it's easier to understand. Uh, this right here is a, a, just a Word document that I opened up. If you open shot cut, name your project, set the view to default. Uh, the way that you do that uh, by setting the view to default is like this. I'll show you in a second. You go to view, layout, restore the default layout. Okay, now, what you actually want to do is create a new project. No. Uh, let's say we make this uh, overlay test tutorial. Start. Now, your pain your pane view um, this is a preview pane where the mouse is this right here nothing selected is filters and properties this right here is your job pane uh, this overlay tutorial is what I just did I'm gonna remove that and also uh, oh no the overlay I'm gonna I'm on the uh, overlay test tutorial right now so what I would do uh, and I'm gonna go back to this you want to add your tracks and the reason I'm doing it like this it'll be easier for somebody who's viewing the video add track you want to add a video track add a video track and then pull your uh, control bar up so that you can see these now these are the uh, track IDs where the mouth mouse is located and uh, if you notice it it adds the tracks in a sequentially numbered order like V V1 and V2 you would think V2 is the track on the bottom but actually it's the track on the top if that's gonna you know mislead you into how you uh, create your opacity track it's better to number them the way you're gonna recognize which one is your base video track the reason I'm saying that is when you go to your uh, base video track and you hit properties you're not gonna see any properties listed because your base video track actually has no properties that's you're always going to see that any effects that you want to apply to that track you would either copy that track in the, the video space pane and apply the effects to that that way you can compare both tracks or um, well there is no or but uh, on this properties you're going to see that the blend mode is over now this is track one I'm calling it track one because it's the over track number two is the base track if it makes more sense to you to number them the the opposite way go ahead and do it like that it, it didn't to me um, so what I want to do is uh, add two uh, two actual videos to the First, you have to drag out the preview pane. Select the track ID that you're gonna you're going to use uh, for the base track, and then drag your video right to that track. You're gonna notice it's saying overwrite. Uh, the reason it's saying overwrite is because it's uh, placing a copy of that video into the uh, video pane so then you want to select your top track and I I used a uh, right now I'm using this uh, view of the grand st st staircase from uh, Titanic it would make more sense if that was opposite but it's not I guess I could mirror it but I'm not going to do that uh, the 
the grand staircase I'm just going to use as a transparent layer. Um, it's not what I actually did in the video I, I, I actually used, but for the purposes of an instructional video, that's what I'm doing. Now, the, uh, the other feature in Shotcut is you can drag these clips to the desired time. In this case, uh, I made it one minute, which is way too long. So I'm going to put it right here. And then I'm going to drag this play bar right to there. And the reason I'm doing that is I'm going to split this video. So that's another feature. What you do is you select the track where you're working. And not the track ID, but the track pane. And then you split it by hitting the split bar, which is right here. And then you can just delete that. Now the other features the shortcut does have, and uh, this is pretty sophisticated for a freeware program, but you have like view. Um, if you notice, if you have both of them blocked or hidden with these little eye icons in the track ID panes, you won't see anything. But if you have the one um, showing and you hit play, well, let's go back to the beginning, you're only going to see that, uh, the top layer, which is the grand staircase. But let's say you want to block that, you're only going to see the bottom layer. With both of them, you're only going to see the top layer. But here's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to add an opacity layer, which is going to cause the top layer to be transparent. So uh, here is properties and filters. We already know what the property is for the uh, tro top track. But I'm in the actual video track pane. I'm not in the track ID pane. So when you're in the track video pane, it's just going to show you what the resolution, it, well, it's going to show you the resolution, the duration is 18 sec seconds, the aspect ratio, repeat, uh, I don't know what that is. But anyway, we're going to go to filters, and uh, this right here has favorites, videos, and audio. But let's say um, I favorited opacity because I was using it several times to create uh, transparent layers. So once you do that, um, you'll see the uh, default level, which is set at 100. You want to hit this little clock icon because that's your keyframes. Now once you hit that, you want to go back to the beginning of that actual video clip and set your keyframes. The keyframes are like an envelope in Sonar. They don't look like actually uh, keyframes that have number uh, or time, you know, a time track that you set the time of in and out for each opacity and transparency, which I like that because it's a lot easier just to set transparency as you go along the video. So the first one I wanted to sort of start like... I want to actually see what's underneath and then I'm going to add a keyframe and that's that little diamond right there have it go up and then may maybe five seconds later go down and then go up again and I'm just doing this for the sake of and bring it back up again you know, social climber, grand staircase, shows what happens. No, <laughs> I'm just joking right there. But anyway, that's that's what you have as your final video. And if I would play this, this is how it's going to look. Now, it's a little bit jumpy right now. And the reason it's a little bit jumpy is because it's still in video making mode um, in this in this view um, you are going to see that jumpiness but when you actually save it or export the file it, it plays very very smooth then when you go to timeline you'll see both your tracks this uh, top track is is really uh, 
you're you're not actually seeing how the keyframes are set. Um, you're only seeing a, a overview of all the tracks. Again, you could you know click this if you want to just to see what's underneath there as you move the play bar wherever you want to, and you could also see it like if you're if you're in your properties view and and go to filters you could see how you moved it up and down by this bar right here so at this point you just go back to the beginning and then you save your video and or you could save the project but um, you would hit export video uh, I would go to just for the sake of I'm going to go to Windows Media Volume. Wherever, oh, there it is right there. And uh, you export the file. And here's the first one I did, but it didn't come out well. And I'm going to hit 2 so that I know that's the second one. Oops. And then hit save and up uh, oops let me see I'm not gonna okay okay they're both stopped uh, I didn't think I I saved the other one but apparently I did now to go back to the word program just to recap everything uh, you open it, name your project, set the view to default, add your tracks, set your view preference again by moving the control lines to the program. Note your bottom track. Uh, again, I showed you that because it's sort of misleading of how you have uh, the default numbering of the tracks. The bottom track is not the opacity layer. Just remember that's your base layer. Um, set the properties for the upper tracks and the properties is in the upper pane of the left side of the screen you'll see uh, well if I would go back to that just to show you if you go see there's none over add saturate multiply screen overlay if you did like you I don't I think I have it so transparent that okay that's what you does it sort of makes it look fluorescent soft light does something else darken would make that overlay sort of darker but again what I'm doing is just over um, overlay doesn't do anything I don't I don't even know why they have overlay there oh it does it sort of makes a like a negative on top of uh, of the base video but anyway, you want it to be over so you have your transparency. And as you as you move your play bar along, you can see how it did that. Which okay, that's that's really about the end of the video. And uh you know, go to your opacity layer, add the filter and then create control uh keyframe points. When you're finished, uh, export it to your prefer preferred location. And that's really about it. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video. I couldn't find anything on this tutorial anywhere. Um, so many people had different ways of doing it. They were saying information like set your control down in your, uh, your video or your track ID. There was no uh, a control icon down there. Uh, so uh, they must have changed it with each version of Shotcut. But this is freeware. It is for Linux, and it, it's also for Windows. Uh, thanks, and uh, have a good day.